So let's define a few terms. Deep learning, machine learning, let's start with intelligence. What is intelligence? It's one of those words that everybody kind of knows what it is, but if you have to define it, it's hard. And intelligence, I would define it as the ability that some beings have, and I'm not defining the term being here, I'm keeping that vague on purpose. Uh, some beings have to learn from experience and to remember that what they learn to apply it and to gain skills that they can later reuse to gain some advantage. OK, and uh, if you contrast that, some animals have intelligence. Definitely some humans have intelligence, not all of them, but I'm not I don't want to get political here. Um, let's just move on. Uh, some animals have intelligence, but all animals have something which is called instinct. And instinct is something which is innate, like uh, I, I don't know if he's on the call, but uh, my good friend Marcus, who lives in Hawaii, has a fantastic thread on Facebook. He rescued a baby bird. The baby fell from the nest. They were unable to, to find the nest and they managed to actually uh, raise the baby bird. It was in the in the last few weeks. Amazing uh, feat, really. And the baby is now a grown bird and is able to fly. And so this ability to fly is not intelligence, right? It's instinct. The, the, the bird knows instinctively that if you throw him in the air, he's going to open the, the wings and be able to fly. This is pretty amazing. But on the other hand, some animals and some birds, for example, crows and, uh, you know, dogs and other animals have intelligence, are able to, to, to learn from their experience and to reuse that. And most importantly for our topic today, uh, computers can also do that. They have this ability to learn from experience and to reuse those skills. And within artificial intelligence, there are a lot of domains. For example, machine learning is one. And within machine learning, we have deep learning, which we are going to concentrate on today. And deep learning, I would say it's um, the fact that we can teach an algorithm from data and most importantly, with minimal supervision to uh, do something and to learn from experience. And so that's the field that we will concentrate on today. Now, of course, deep learning, machine learning, this is quite different from programming. And so for us developer, it's a little bit difficult. Programming is something where we take an algorithm and, you know, typically we joke about it. We go to Stack Overflow and copy paste. All right. This is kind of what we do. Um, we take an algorithm, we translate that algorithm into code. And the code can be anything. For me, it's mostly, most probably going to be uh, C Sharp and .NET, uh, but you have also Python, you have JavaScript, you have Java, you have tons of things. And then you feed that system with data. And I would say that if you compare the amount of data that you use here in programming compared to machine learning, the amount of data is way smaller, okay? And at the end, you get some answers. And this is a very repeatable process. If you take the same algorithm and the same data, you will get the same answers every time. And this is why we can do unit testing in programming. We can basically write code which tests some code. And every time you run the test, you get the same answer and you assert the answer. You make sure that you get the same one. So this is um, quite interesting. But if you go in machine learning, we are going to switch things around a little bit. We are going to feed some answers inside the system uh, and some data. And so, for example, you can say, I want to do image classification. I'm going to train my model by taking an image of, uh, of an orange. So that's the data. And we take many images of oranges, apples, etc. And then we tag them. We say on the picture of an orange, that's an orange. On the picture of an apple, that's an apple. And those are the answers. And then we feed that into some uh, frameworks, for example, TensorFlow, PyTorch, CoreML, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, we get an algorithm. And this algorithm is something that in machine learning we call a model. And this model that we have trained, now we can reuse it in production. So we are, to, we are going to put that into more code with the actual data that we want to use, the production data. And then at the end, we are going to get some predictions. And note that I didn't say answers, I said predictions, because that's quite different. The predictions that we get in AI are something like, I think it's an orange, but I'm not totally sure. I think it's 85% 
possibility it's an orange. I'm about 30% sure that it might also be an apple. Okay. And then after that, up to us to make sense of the answer by saying, for example, okay, if it's uh, more than 50%, then it's probably going to be correct. And so we have uh, these kind of things. And also, most importantly, uh, the predictions may change over time. There are a few things that can happen. First of all, if you continuously train your model, it is absolutely possible that the model evolves in time that those, those predictions become, for example, more precise. And also small changes in the data can bring some changes in the prediction. For example, if you see two images, which uh, to the human eye seem very, very similar, but there are some small differences, for example, in exposure or in the lighting, uh, then that can lead to big differences in the prediction. So for us developers, it's a little bit difficult to grasp those, uh, those concepts, okay? Now, another thing I wanted to mention is why now? Why is AI, deep learning, machine learning booming now? Why are we finally able to use those systems in production? Those are very old concepts. Huh? In 1943, the first neuron model, back then they were calling that the perceptron, was developed. This is during World War II, okay? This is really old. I mean, most of uh, people on Earth were not born back then, right? Uh, 1955, 14 years before men went to the moon with primitive computers, um, the first AI conference took place. And of course, this was all theoretical, but now we are able to do something with those theories. And one reason is big data. We have finally access to enough data to train those models. You know that everything these days is instrumented. We gather data. We have the possibility to store the data. In Azure, we, we routinely talk about petabytes, uh, terabytes of data. Uh, and uh, so we have the possibility to, to store this data and to transport it. And we also have powerful computers, especially graphical processing units. And I'll come back to that uh, in a moment, a little bit later, to explain to you why it's important to have graphical processing units. Uh, and finally, software, advances in software. We now have powerful libraries, powerful um, you know, uh, frameworks, which can take advantage of the big data that we have and of the uh, powerful hardware that we have. 